and a one, a two, a one, two, three. Hello, hello, hello. How are we? Welcome back to the Hot Girl Guide podcast. Another episode, another day. How are we? How are we doing? I have had a week. I have had a week. Things have came up this week that have just been a little bit inconvenient, which is why we missed another episode yesterday, but it's fine because in the last week alone, I have uploaded five podcast episodes, which is a lot more than I have done in the last six months. So here's to consistency. Here's to more energy on the podcast. I'm not going to get into my inconveniences of the week because number one, you don't care. And number two, I don't want to share that. (laughs) Boundaries. But what I will say is there's a lot of funny things going on with the planets this week. We have Mars coming out of retrograde and it had its last square and then there's a lot of stuff going on with Neptune which is the planet of confusion. So if you are confused this week or you feel like other people around you are confused this week then you're probably not wrong but it does get better. Tomorrow Venus moves into Taurus. We start Aries season I think tomorrow. We start Aries season very soon, is all I know. Happy birthday to all my Aries girlies. And we have an Aries new moon soon. So it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. That's what I've been saying. But I'm back. I'm podcasting. I'm here. I'm in my Hot Girl Guide hoodie. If you don't know now, you know the Hot Girl Guide does have merch. Now, the only merch available on the website right now is actually the pink hoodie that I'm wearing. If you're watching this podcast, if you're just listening, you can just go into the hotgirlguide.com and see. But basically, the only piece of merch available as of this very moment in time is the Pink Vibes hoodie. It will be available in a crew neck soon, along with some new merch, which I'm excited about. I have been working on this since January. I have got so many samples. You would not believe the amount of hoodies and crew necks that I have, because when I get the samples, I can't send them back. So I'm just stuck with these hoodies and crewnecks that are either the wrong colour or the font is wrong or the design is wrong or the sizing is wrong or the material is wrong. I said we would start the podcast with something new um, because I wanted to kind of bring my love of perfumes and scents into my content in some way. And no, this is not an ad, but I love perfume. I think there is nothing better in this life than when someone compliments you on how you smell. Like if they're like, oh my God, you smell amazing. What are you wearing? (gasps) Bury me right now. Like it's the biggest compliment when someone's like, oh my God, you smell amazing. Because you know yourself when you're around someone who smells so good, all you can think about is how good they smell. So anyways, we're going to do a perfume of the pod, kind of like a perfume of a day of the day but it's of each podcast episode. Now, I do have quite the collection, so this should last us for seven to ten episodes. And after that, perfume companies are just going to have to start sending me perfumes, aren't they? You see, we're always thinking top three inches, we're using them. Anyways, today's perfume of the pod is... Now, this one is very special and dear to me. And also... If you are one of the girlies who listens from Dubai, because I see you, I see the percentage of girlies who listens to the podcast from the UAE. And number one, I'm so grateful to you. But number two, you can literally probably have this delivered to your house in the next hour. (laughs) Because if you don't know, Dubai is the land of convenience. You can have anything delivered to your house definitely within 24 hours, probably within an hour or two. Now, I know this whole segment has sounded like an ad so far, but I promise it's not. It's not an ad for Dubai and it's not an ad for perfume. But the first perfume of the pod is the brand Swiss Arabian and the perfume is called Shagaf Oud. When I tell you, if you live in Dubai, you know the Emiratis, the locals, they smell beautiful, stunning, gorgeous, and they have this like deep oudy smell. It's an oud. It is 
one of the longest lasting best perfumes I've ever used in my entire life. I'm not even lying. The reason I got this and I'm going to tell the story because I think it's very important. I'm also going to spray. Basically, when I was living in Dubai, I was in the Dubai mall and a man, you know, those guys on the perfume stalls. He was like, do you want to try this? Beautiful lady, you have to try this. You have to smell as beautiful as you look. You know, they are charmers. So I spritzed it on myself and I was like, oh, wow, it smelled amazing. But I wasn't sold because it was at one of the stalls in the Dubai mall downstairs. And I didn't know if that was like a legit or what was going on. So I went home. I could still smell this perfume off me. And my boyfriend at the time was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. And he was a very, 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 very honest man. So I went home. I was like, yeah, that perfume is amazing. Maybe I'll get it. But I didn't know how much it was. I didn't ask. And I assumed because it was a UAE Dubai brand that it would have been expensive. So I went home and I washed the top I was wearing that day because I probably stained it. You know me. It was a light blue top. I, I remember the exact top and it was a light blue top and I definitely stained it. I definitely spilled something on it. This is where I wear black all the time. Well, except now. But... I put it in the wash. I put it through a proper wa wash, right? Took the top out of the wash and it still smelled like this perfume. Shagaf Oud by Swiss Arabian. If you live in the United States, Swiss Arabian has a website. They ship to the United States. They ship everywhere, I think, but Ireland. I don't think they ship to Europe. I'm not sure. But, or if you have one of your friends who is a teacher in Dubai or an air hostess or lives in Dubai, get them to get you this perfume. What's even better is when I went back to the mall to buy this perfume, it's so cheap. It's like 40 or 50 euro for, I think this is a 100 ml bottle. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it's 40 or 50 euro for a 100 ml bottle. I don't like gatekeeping. And if we all want to smell beautiful, stunning, amazing, then we all can smell beautiful, stunning, amazing together. So that is the perfume of the pod today. So today's episode is actually a bit of a vulnerable one. Um, I don't really usually talk about any of these topics, but I said that I would today in the name of relatability and vulnerability and maybe you relating to me more. So um, sorry if I don't make eye contact. <laughs> during a lot of it but basically today we're going to talk about all the things that I struggle with or have struggled with or do kind of on and off struggle with because we're going to normalize life not being perfect and we're going to normalize not having everything together and we're going to normalize the little things we don't live a perfect life I don't live a perfect life you don't live a perfect life and I think that's normal and fine so the first thing that I struggle with is keep, <laughs> I wrote notes for this podcast. The first thing <laughs> I literally typed out was keeping my stupid room clean and organized. It's not even clean. I don't struggle with cleanliness or hygiene in my bedroom. I struggle with mess, makeup everywhere, clothes everywhere, a floor robe, clothes on the floor. We all know last week I did a whole podcast episode about folding your underwear because that is how much of a positive impact it has on me. But also it's such a big deal for me to fold my underwear because I'm not that girly. I am disorganized. I will clean my room. It will be beautiful, stunning, gorgeous, amazing. And next thing it will get just get messy because I use things and I drop them. And I don't know is that undiagnosed ADHD. I don't know what it is. It's so hard for me. It's something that is hard. And unless you understand staying tidy and organized being hard, then you're probably very confused right now. But for some people, it just doesn't come naturally to them. And also, I'm creative. And I do feel like creative people are a bit more messy because our brains are in so many different places at so many different times. I'm justifying myself, but it is genuinely something that I struggle with is keeping my stupid room clean and it's not like I don't appreciate a clean room when I walk into my bedroom and I have left it clean or I've cleaned it before I've left and I come back in and it's clean and my bed is dressed and it looks beautiful and cozy and amazing I literally sigh a breath of relief because it makes me feel so good 
But I always forget that in the moment when I'm like throwing my pants on the floor or throwing my laundry on my bed when it's done instead of folding it and putting it away and then throwing it on the floor and then getting into bed because who wants to fold laundry before they get into bed? Not me. I will absolutely 100% definitely when <laughs> I was about to say when I'm older as if I'm not nearly 29. <laughs> I don't know. Do you ever grow up of that? I don't know. Do you ever fall out of the habit of being like, oh, when I'm older, I'm going to do this. But when I am living in my own apartment and own space, whether that's a one bed or a studio or I buy a house, who knows what could happen? We're not cutting off any possibility, right? I know there's a housing crisis, but who knows? Who knows? We have to aim high. When I am in that situation in my life, which is going to be very soon, I will probably pay for a cleaner to come once a week. And I see that as value for money because it's so difficult for me to maintain and it takes so much of my mental energy to do it. I don't know if anyone else can relate right now, but it takes so much of my mental energy to actually clean and organize and to even hype myself up to do it unless I like make a bargain with myself. <laughs> It's probably not happening. It'll only happen when either someone's coming over so I have to clean it or if I'm putting off something else so I clean my room <laughs> as a distraction. But I heard something recently and basically the person on TikTok, of course, I did not read an article, this was on TikTok, was saying that if you had friends or family coming over to your house, you would clean because you respect them coming into your space and you want them to come into a nice, t tidy, organized space. And you have to learn to respect yourself and like honor yourself as much. Like, why shouldn't you deserve to be in a clean, nice, organized space? And I'm trying to keep that mindset every single time I'm about to leave my pants on the floor. I think about my higher self and I'm like, would my or not my higher self, my future self. I'm like, will future Rebecca, how can we make future Rebecca's life easier all the time is what I say. So I'm trying, but it is definitely something that I struggle with. And if I can afford it when I have my own place, I will have a full time cleaner and that will be money that I spend. And of course, it is a luxury, but a luxury that I want in my life. Now, this one was something that I currently struggled with at the time of writing these notes and planning this podcast, but I've actually overcame it. So I'm very excited to talk about this one. The second one is getting out of bed in the morning. I love my bed. I love being comfy cozy. I love being snuggly. I'm a Taurus. So, you know, mornings are slow for me. We're slow to get going. I'm never moody, to be honest, but I'm definitely not moody in the morning. I remember when I was at uh, Gabrielle's therapy retreat back in September, I was sharing a bedroom with a girl called Katrina. Shout out Katrina if you're listening. And we were sharing a bedroom and she was like, I would love to be you. And I was like, what do you want about? This girl is a nurse, so she has to get up every single morning. And she was like, in the mornings, before your eyes are even open, you're like, good morning. Like, she was like, you're so happy in the mornings. And I was like, fair, good point. Like, I'm not a moody morning person, but I would rather stay in bed. Do you know what I mean? But I listened to a podcast recently that talked about sleep cycles and basically a sleep cycle is 90 minutes. So when you wake up in the morning, no matter what time you wake up, you are breaking a sleep cycle. No problem. But then if you drift back to sleep for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, you're going into another sleep cycle. So then when you try wake yourself up in the 10 minutes and get out of bed, you feel worse. Not only do you feel better, if you get up straight away when you wake up or like wake yourself up, I don't care if you read, you don't have to get out of the bed physically. At least that's what I tell myself. But if you wake up, then your brain is a lot more alert and it works better for those first 90 minutes of the day. Whereas if you're snoozing, it's actually bad for your brain and bad for you because you'll be more tired and it's actually working. Like, I swear to God, I don't know what part of my subconscious learning that piece of information stuck to. But I swear to God, every single morning since I've heard that fact, even on the weekend, even on Saturday and Sunday, every single morning since I heard that fact, when I wake up, I'm like, OK, I have to get up now. My sleep cycle's over. I woke up naturally. I don't set alarms. 
this is controversial. I do not set alarms unless I absolutely have to get up and I have an appointment. I usually wake up naturally around half nine, ten, maybe nine, maybe half eight. Some mornings this morning it was actually half eight. But I wake up between half eight and half nine, ten, like no later than ten really in the mornings. And I don't have to be anywhere and I don't schedule my work for the morning times. So I and I work later into the night, like right now it's 8 p.m. and I'm recording this podcast and I have to go edit it and everything. So I don't set alarms. So when I wake up the first time is when I'm naturally waking up. I'm not having an alarm like break my deep sleep cycle or whatever. So ever since I've heard that fact, I've actually been able to get out of bed in the morning or wake up in the morning. So it's actually, fingers crossed right now, not something that I struggle with, but it definitely was. So if you struggle to get up in the morning, just know not everyone's a morning person. Unless you live in Australia, I truly believe if you move to Australia, you will become a morning person. You have no choice. I don't know. Is it the Southern Hemisphere? I don't know. Is it because they're so upside down? I really don't know. But if you move to Australia, you will become a morning person. I used to wake up at like 5 a.m. every day for funsies. The next thing I struggle with is actually really funny because obviously this list has probably since I wrote it stuck into my subconscious and my subconscious is actively working on like improving the things that I struggle with because the next thing I wrote down is getting ready for the day and I've actually been kind of getting ready for the day every day this week. (laughs) I don't know is it the folding of the underwear? I really don't but basically because I work from home and because a lot of the days I wouldn't have to necessarily leave the house or I don't drive I'm 28 too young to drive you know what I mean? Some days it's raining so I can't leave to like go to the gym or go to town. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I won't get ready for the day. And I like stay in my pyjamas a bit too long or I just throw on a tracksuit and I might do my morning skincare and I might just not get ready for my day. But on days that I do get ready for my day, I feel so much better. I feel like I'm alive. I have a purpose. I'm here. I'm getting ready for the day. Seize the day, you know carpe diem and all that (laughs) but sometimes I do struggle with getting ready for the day but I actually have been really doing that well this week like every day this week I have got ready in some shape or form for the day I don't mean a full face of makeup I don't mean a full outfit it's just like putting on something that feels cute maybe brushing your hair a bit of lip gloss or no lip gloss, no makeup, skincare, just something to like get ready, maybe putting on a bra. You know what I mean? Now, my girlies who don't have to wear a bra, putting on a bra doesn't make a difference for you. I would love if I didn't have to wear a bra. But when I don't wear a bra, my back gets sore. Yay, feminism. The next thing that I struggle with is working from home. Because I work from home, And because I live at home, like with my parents and my brother, I work a lot from my bedroom or I did before I cleaned out this room. And sometimes it can be hard working from home because you don't get that like social aspect of a job, really. And you're kind of on your own time. So you really have to be self-disciplined to get shit done and not just give yourself the afternoon off because you feel like it every single day. (laughs) But... Sometimes working from home can be a struggle. I would love to be like a go to a cafe and work girly, but I live in a small town and I don't, that's not a thing where I live. Like, I don't think people go to cafes with their laptops. Also, my laptop always has to be plugged into a charger, which is very inconvenient. But I do feel like when I'm in my city girl era again, when I move to Sydney, maybe I'll go to a cafe and work or like, do something like that because I feel like it does kind of switch something in your brain that kind of gets you going. Okay, so the last thing I struggle with and the reason that I'm making this podcast at all at all is to hopefully work on this. But the last thing I struggle with is vulnerability. Vulnerability. Saying that word is actually something that I struggle with. Of course, me using humor. I struggle. <laughs> I struggle to be vulnerable sometimes and I know it's kind of funny hearing that from someone who 
is on the internet and makes YouTube videos and podcasts and TikTok content and stuff like that. But I don't know, has anyone ever noticed, but I'm not too vulnerable about my problems or my emotions on the internet. Number one, that's a boundary that I set because I feel like not everyone needs to know every single thing about your life, even if you are online. See, I struggle with this because I want my content on the internet to be positive and inspiring and inspire you to hype yourself up and be confident and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of the time, I'm like, why would I be vulnerable and talk about something that's getting me down at the moment when I should be hyping other people up? But what I fail to realise in this, those moments is that by people hearing someone else going through something that is inspiring to them because they feel less alone. And I learned that recently with a video I made on TikTok. I talked about how when I was 24, 25, I felt this pressure to move home from Australia and start my life because I felt so behind. And by talking about that, that video has had such huge response and people really resonated with it. Now, that was me being vulnerable about the past. It was something that I had already dealt with and got over. So maybe I'll start there. Like maybe I'll start with like vulnerable stories from my past that I've got over. Because I feel like sometimes when you're going through something, you like a problem shared isn't a problem halved. Especially if that problem is being shared with potentially thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I do struggle with being vulnerable, but I also come from this place of like, there is so much bad news and sadness and negativity. And I'm not saying being vulnerable is negative, but there are so many things on the internet that don't have a positive, happy lens. So I really want to be that place on the internet that kind of has a more positive, happy lens. But maybe I do think I need to be more vulnerable and I am trying to work on that and just kind of sharing like little things. I don't know. I need to write a list of like what vulnerabilities I potentially could share. I mean, I've talked about dealing with acne since I was age 11, which was a big struggle of mine. But see, it's not a struggle of mine anymore, because even if I get a big breakout or loads of spots, because when you have acne for so many years of your life, you just get to a point where you're like, do you know what? A spot is a spot. There is nothing I can do. We just have to keep moving. I do talk about that openly and I think I am quite vulnerable when it comes to that. But I'm going to work on the vulnerability thing. I, I don't know how, um, but it is an intention of mine to be more vulnerable. I mean, I guess this podcast was vulnerable. Now, we didn't go very deep. <laughs> I kept it light, but it's a start. So yeah, thank you for listening to another episode of the Hot Girl Guide podcast. Don't forget, sharing this on social media is free. F-R-E-E. -E. Okay, goodbye.